All right, guys. Champions League. We should be okay now. We've not got Northland City. Like that was the big test, and especially because we've got Bar in the semis, and we beat them eight-one in the group stage. Like we can be dominant here. We can just fresh them. Like really, give it to them, eh? Like even if we fall behind, just really stick it to these sheep, okay? Really want to just fresh them, just fresh them, just give it all, just. Oh. Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 88 of the New Zealand Builder Nation here on Sean Does FM with both the All Whites and with Kashmir Technical and Kamath Day going to make our way through the semi-finals of the OFC Champions League where we take on the Black Sheep of Bar in Fiji and the first league is away from home so we can squeeze in the bus trip and we'll probably, provided we beat them like we should in that first league, also take on Christchurch United in a Southern League game. So if you're looking forward to that coming up in today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated, but at the end of last week, big quarter final when we took on Auckland City, if you missed that one, I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner. You can see the result there from the second leg in the top right corner. A 3 0 win off the back of a 2 all draw at the GMP did mean Auckland City went out early, as you'd expect, considering they lost to Tafia in the group stage. So that's how we've made our way through to the semi finals of the OFC Champions League. And we take on a bar team. We bet 8 1 back in the group stage. So you'd like to think. This will be pretty routine for us, hence why I think we'll probably be playing Christchurch United in the second game of today's episode. As expected, Kossa, they did get past ABM Galaxy in that quarterfinal that was still taking place. They'll take on the Taufia outfit that did defeat Auckland City. Really, we should be going forward now and picking up this Champions League on our way to the FIFA Club World Cup later this year. But thankfully for this one, no injury or suspension concerns, albeit there's a few tired players off the back of those Auckland City games, even though it has been a week since then, we haven't played any games in between now and then, but somehow some players haven't quite recovered. But yeah, we should still be okay with that situation, because as I said, this is a team who, if we go back a little bit, 8-1 in our first game of the season in the group stages. So you'd like to think we're going to give these guys a pretty similar pounding over two legs. In today's episode, one and a half star reputation club to get past Raul Kokomora. Pretty comfortably winning both legs in that quarterfinal, but obviously we're a bit of a different beast in Oceania compared to the other teams here outside of Auckland City. You'd like to think this is going to be very winnable, and you can see we're about to head off here on this bus trip. So let's make our way to Go Bean Park. It's a bus trip over in Fiji. And seeing as we are going overseas, we're doing a hotel to stay at near the Go Bean Park in Bar, and this is what we've found here. Brugage Luxury Apartments, not too sure I've got the pronunciation of that first part right, but it is on the main street in Bar. $202 a night, not too bad, especially compared to stuff like the Intercontinental Golf Resort and Spa, which does sound tempting, but that's $980 a night. And we're at Cashmere Technical, we don't have that much money these days, so we're going to stay at the Luxury Apartments, book the entire place out. Here's the website. It does look pretty luxurious, should be weighed on hand and foot. We've got eight spacious guest rooms. Hopefully the boys don't mind sleeping with each other in the same room. Not that way, at least I think anyway. There's the apartments and suites. They look very nice. In fact, you can sleep free, so it's even better. You can squeeze them all in there. Probably going to need to with our squad of 28 players, I believe it is, for the Champions League. There's a video. It looks luxurious as heck. There's all sorts. It's got smart TVs. It's always a plus. There's stuff nearby. And going back down here a bit further, it does just look really nice. This is where we're staying over in Fiji. They've got wine glasses if we get a bit rowdy for after the game. In terms of the trip itself, not too long either. Only three and a half kilometers to the stadium. Do have to go over the Bar River on King's Road. That could be a bit of a concern if you've seen prior bus trips in this series, but we'll see how Google Maps goes here over in Fiji. I did just check the start of it, and thankfully we can start from right outside of the hotel once I actually click on the right thing, because for some reason now I can't. There it is, I think. That might be the apartments we'll be staying at. Maybe not. Let me just try and get here on the road itself. Oh dear, this might be very, very bad bus trip. Hold on. Let's try and sort this out. 
I think we were somewhere around there before it's been built since this photo was taken in May 2020. But we want to go that way and go down the road if we can. We're going down the street on the footpath instead of the actual road itself, which is a bit weird. Kumas fast food nearby. That's a nice little dairy for the guys to stop up on. So we just get make our way here down this road and try and get our way a bit further towards where we're supposed to be going because I'm really not too sure what's going on here with the Google Maps. It's a bit all over the shop. I think now we might be a little bit better. Somewhere back there was where we're staying. Now we're actually on a road going past the fashion shop and some other stuff. And I think now we're all sorted. I'm going to start making our way towards the stadium. Now I did run into an early roadblock there in terms of the map running out. So we've just gone down the rest of that road there and now taken a left going past the mobile here. And we are going this way towards the stadium. So we'll see what pops up here on the right hand side. You can see a lot of greenery. Might be some farming areas there over in Fiji. We'll just see what's coming up here on the left hand side as we start to make our way towards a bridge. And I'm not too confident about the bridge considering we've issues with those in Australia and New Zealand. This one could be rougher being over in Fiji. It's something for Lisa there on the left hand side. Not too sure what that's supposed to be. There's a contact number if anyone was interested in that property over in Fiji. Kind of looks like Slumdog Millionaire. Just a little bit of at least Slumdog Millionaire, but going forward a bit further. 60k an hour. I think we'll be fine going on the left hand side here something but it does look like it might be a bit more construction than anything else but now we should be getting closer to the bar river really looks like it might be the big highlight on our way to the stadium so let's see how the crossing does go here as we steadily make our way past this barren land on the right hand side bit of a link up and now we should hopefully go actually go over the river albeit i think the maps are gonna just cut me off again so maybe not even going to be able to cross the river, which might be for the best because we don't want to ride off another bus on the bus trips. There's been a few ride offs this year. And indeed, this was the closest I could get to being on the bridge that's coming off it. You can see the bridge back there, albeit there's a big car in the way, which isn't helping too much. That was the river we went over. Not too sure how much water was in it based on that picture, but we're going to keep on going here and continue to make our way closer to the Govin Park. As you can see, Google Maps and Fiji a little bit choppy, so we'll see as we make our way past the sign talking about happy times with nappy time. Just how close now we are, we're in absolutely no man's land. Let's try and actually make our way back onto the road we want to be on. Looks like we have to make our way all the way forward to after the left hand turn. We want to go, let's try and figure out the other way. We want to go down here. Can we do that? I don't know if we can. In fact, we need to go down this road, this little side one. Yeah, it's going to be a bit of a choppy bus trip. Might not be the most smooth experience, this one. Not too sure if the suspension is too good on this mini bus that we've hired here in Fiji. And the next part of the bus trip that I can click on here in terms of the road, as I said, very choppy. That looks like quite a luxurious house, though, for Fiji, just based on what we've seen so far. It actually looks like it might be nicer than our luxury apartments from the outside. That might be a good spot there, quite close to Govine Park. Now we'll make our way forward a bit further. And to be fair, we're probably not that far away from getting to the stadium itself, considering how this bus trip's going. And indeed, we've made our way now to Govine Park. Unfortunately, our bus trip, a little bit choppy. As you can see, driveway is a little bit rough. Leaves a bit to be desired, it's fair to say. But to be fair, at least there is a road, unlike some other stadiums back in New Zealand. There were some there which didn't have too good access, it's fair to say, but there's the grandstand. It's got bar bar written all over it for the black sheep. And on the right hand side, there's the ground itself. Obviously, they do need to put the posts up. That would be quite nice considering this is a Champions League semi-final and all. But there is the stadium. Let's see if there's some different pictures available apart from this driveway one. And to be fair, there's not too many. I think this is the best one I can find here when the players are shaking hands before the game. You can see it here from that stand, the other side. Just a touch more temporary, but there's Govine Park and Bar, a Fijian bus trip. Not too sure if that was such a good idea in truth, but anyway, we've done it. Now let's hopefully bash the Black Sheep of Bar. And here are the team sheets for the first league. As I said, we've got a lot of rotation. First up are Bar. There they are with a 4 2 3 1. But here we come. Lots of rotation with our players being tied from that Auckland City game. El at right back. Kanate at left side, centre back. And also our front four that have been changed. Walker, Young, Al Ghazali, and Ahmed Shushu out left. So a lot of rotation, but hopefully still going to put out 
a very good performance and pick up a comfy win in the first leg. Albeit it's taken a little while here for the first highlight, 12 minutes in and we eventually get one of Farron here inside of the final third where of course are in the yellow bar, are in the all black, hence the black sheep nickname, but now it is Nathan Walker. Cuts inside, takes on a shot there with his left foot. Big deflection, but thankfully makes its way into the bottom left corner. And there's the opening goal, which hopefully might open the floodgates here over in Fiji and start to get us here on our way towards a Champions League final. It was a well-worked routine there from the front, but Nathan Walker, bit of a speculative shot. I think the defender there actually has hindered the goalkeeper and helping it get past him into that bottom left corner. And we go 1-0 in front. And only a few minutes on from that opening goal, now we are back on the attack here, starting with Al Katani there down our right-hand side, found the goal scorer in Nathan Walker. Goes down, but no penalty, but this highlight will continue as we keep the ball here inside of the final third. Tio Demiro plays that one forward again to Al Katani. Shusha with a header, it goes close, but not quite enough dip on that. In time, comes off the crossbar to still only 1-0, but now the highlights do start to flow, and we are on the front foot yet again, no doubt. This should be the theme for most of this game is now Smith. He will cut inside, takes on the shot there. Unfortunately, couldn't quite pick out that bottom right corner and rock a cake makes a decent save there for the Black Sheep. Smith now with the corner. We find some bodies, but Tio Demelo puts that well high. Still only one nil in front at the 20 minute mark. And surprisingly, that might be all the highlights for the first half. Only those three off the back of that first goal, which Nathan Walker did score. Ahmed Shusha picks up a yellow card. So we might take him off here at half time for our best player from last season in it, Kevin Mina. But honestly, that was a pretty average first half considering we're playing bar and they're not very good. We beat them 8 1 in the group stage currently. Going to need to do a lot better in the second half to match that scoreline. But that's a pretty average first half from us. So Kevin Mina, he can come on and hopefully kick us into gear. Doing well, definitely capable of better. Only 1 0 in front at half time in the first league. And perhaps that halftime team talks worked as there's an early highlight here in the second half, albeit it is deep inside of our own half, and that's a really poor pass that from Xavier Smith. So Barr might be on the attack, but good tackle there from Louis Evans to get the ball back. Now Walker to Clark to Young to Mina. So we start to get here on the front foot, albeit a little bit scrambled in the passing, but Walker inside the byline floats this one far post looking for the fresh Kevin Mina. Unfortunately, can't quite find him. They do have the ball there briefly, Barr, but thankfully Smith Reacts quite well. Can tell he's going to pump that one deep. And we get the ball back. Nice ball over the top there too. For Mina. And beats the goalkeeper near post. That's his first goal of the new season, of course. He scored quite a few goals in one of the group stage games of the Champions League that we did play last week. But Kevin Mina off of the bench with some immediate impact. Sam Clark there with a nice ball over the top of Mina as well. And behind the goalkeeper there. Probably should be doing a bit better, but thankfully we grab a cushion goal early in the second half. And only a few minutes on from that first goal of the second half. Now we'll go for here inside the final third. Hopefully going to be a bit more clinical in this half, especially with Kevin Mina on the field. Gets a bit of help there from the inside of the post, but heads that one down off the ball from Al Katani. And Kevin Mina might be stepping up when we need him to, because the rest of the team here have been pretty average so far, apart from Nathan Walker and the beefy Al Katani. Also helping set up some goals so far in this game. But Mina with the header and makes it 3-0. And going forward to just try the armor for the next highlight of this game. It's a corner here in our favor. Looking for Kanate at the near post. Then falls to Tio Demelo. He tries to put that one into the mixer. But tight angle. Bar can clear the lines. And that's the highlight. Some good chances there off that set piece. But unfortunately, you'd think we would have been in front by a higher scoreline by now. But Bar here with a highlight shortly off the back. Of that previous one. Now Rizal down the right hand side just manages to keep that ball in field but good bit there from Xavier Smith to win that one back for us and now Clark is on the ball plays it for Tamina who of course these days is on a hat trick or plays that one in field for Jamie Young who got the start in this game goes back to Mina there rather fortunately off the back of a tackle from one of the black sheep. Now Evans plays this out to the right hand side Al Katani having a pretty good game starts to cut inside will take on the shot was looking there for the top left corner, but decent save there from Rocco Vukak to keep it at 3-0. But again, we are on the attack shortly off the back of that. Evans pumps that one for to Nathan Walker, who's got one goal so far in this game. Let's see if he can also get himself onto a hat-trick. Goes back there to Al Katani to Evans. Now Clark, that goes forward to Al Ghazali, who so far is at a bit 
of a quiet game, but Smith floats this one far post for Nathan Walker, and he will also now be sitting on a hat trick. Hopefully, that's the goal that might put this tight up. But I think 4 0 is going to be pretty difficult for Bar to come back from that. And the second leg would take some sort of bottle job, but that makes it 4 0. Good work here from both our wingers in this game, especially Mina, since he's come on for Armin Shusha, but both wingbacks also linking up with them quite nicely. Nathan Walker also on a hat trick as he makes it 4 0. And just about to make our way into the last 15 minutes of this game, so I think it's a good time here to make our last couple of substitutions. Sam Clark down to a red heart to Tristan Turner. He can come on. Jamie Young's been a bit fierce so far in this game. So I think here, going to bring on Jansen in the camera roll, even though he is a bit tired. Also, El Ghazali going a bit fairly. And Xavier Smith is on a yellow card in terms of this competition. So we'll bring on Sutton. And I think in terms of striking options, the Hopman de Villiers could use some game time. So you may as well try him up front in place of Al Ghazali that will use all our subs up. So hopefully those players do get a rating with only about 15 minutes left. Still 4-0 in front. And his late free kick here in our favour. Let's see if we can make it 5-0 or if it's going to be 4-0 going in to that second league. But either way, I think we're pretty safe going in to that second league. Should be wrapping this one up. Unfortunately, that highlight actually got cut off for some reason. But a 4-0 win, that's largely thanks to Kevin Mina's impact in the second half. But also Nathan Walker got a goal. In both halves, as you can see, stats-wise, we're definitely the better team in that game. XG-wise, though, wasn't too high, only 1.95, but thankfully, we did score the four goals over there in Fiji. You'd imagine we'll get the job done a bit more comfortably in the second league back at the GMP and should be going through to yet another OFC Champions League final. So I think we'll come back shortly and play a game in the Southern League against Christchurch United. And we are back for that Southern League game against Christchurch United, who usually are our closest challengers in this league. We've gone back to our best 11, but still got Jamie Young in there over Jansen on a heavy workload. Here are Christchurch United. They won their opening match day as well. Of course, we beat Dunedin City Royals 11-2. They're going with a 4-3-3. Hopefully, you can pick up a win and stay on top of the league early stages. And just shot the 20 minute mark, first highlight here is a free kick to Kevin Mina. That one does go just wide though, so unfortunately still nil all. There are the stats, eight shots to none, but only one on target so far. A bit disappointing. And yet again, Kevin Mina with a chance here from set piece. This one will come off the woodwork. It falls to Juan Carlos Castro, who's been in red hot form, albeit can be a little bit streaky, but is banging the goals in his first season here at Cashmere Technical. That's six. I don't know if that counts, the goals he got in those first couple of games of the Champions League. I think he picked up a good five or so in the group stages. But lucky that we eventually take a 1-0 lead. And much like that bar game, a little bit disappointed by the lack of action here in the first half of this one. And the fact we're only 1-0 in front, despite the fact we've been all over Crush United in this game. Late free kick to them there. We hit it away and Castro will win the race to that ball. But unfortunately, Simpkin then beats him to it. And Miambo will get in behind here. Slightly tight angle. Can you try and set up a goal here for Christchurch Nine Gonzalez with a header? But thankfully, that one's just off target. Now, you nearly if Emma Slate there in the first half. We're 1 0 in front going into half time, but definitely the team who should be in front. But unfortunately, much like in that bar game, only by a scoreline of 1 0. Especially disappointing because this is pretty close to our first choice 11. See again, doing well, capable of better. Hopefully, a few more goals in the second half. Only 1 0 in front over Christchurch United. And five minutes into the second half, hopefully a sign here of more action in this one. There's a corner in our favour. Hopefully can grab that cushion goal. Sam Clark is on the ball. Just takes a turn there before playing it into Smith. And now Torek now starts to cut inside. Takes on the shot. That one takes a good old deflection, it looks like. And Torek now will pick up a cushion goal. And hopefully now we can kick on and score a few more goals in the second game of today's episode. Because it's fair to say, been a little bit scratchy in terms of our goal scoring in this episode so far, considering the opposition that we are taking on, a defender there doesn't help out the goalkeeper. Good deflection on that one, but Tariq now will pick up a goal to make it 2-0. And just making our way past the hour mark in this game, I think it's time here for our first sub, because Oima Goldrick on a yellow heart, we won't risk things. Isaac Hughes will come on for him. And only a few minutes on from that previous sub, now we've got Xavier Smith and Louis Evans down to red heart, so Leon Sutton and Tristan Turner can come on for those two. We'll just see which of Clark and Turner are better suited to being the ball wing midfielder. I think it might be Sam Clark with some slightly better tackling. In fact, that's not the case. Tristan Turner, he can go to ball wing midfielder. Straight swap there for Louis Evans. But still, 
only 2-0 in front despite the fact stats wise we are definitely on the front foot now. A bit of a short free kick here to Jamie Young here. Take on the shot looking for that top right corner but unfortunately that one goes just high and wide and now the highlights they do start to flow. Crushes United definitely still in this game if they can score a goal. Ching Ching Sun, a former player who came for our youth and take these days has gone to Crushes United. He was on the ball there briefly and as you again looks like he's playing defensive midfield there for our position in today's episode but now the ball finds its way forward to Mo Des before going back to Autumn. Let's see if Christchurch United can find a way back into this game. Grove, they now have to go here down the right-hand side. Jones, he will cut inside, but good hustle there from Kevin Mina. Get that ball back for us, and let's see if we can launch an attack and hopefully put this game to bed with a third goal. Torek now back out right. We'll pull this one back for Castro. We'll bet that's not a very good idea, and a chance here for Christchurch on the counter-attack, and it now falls to Kakuza. Nice ball out there too, to Gonzalez. Had that chance late in the first half and thankfully can't quite hit the target yet again. That one gets blasted over the crossbar. So Christchurch United are getting chances, especially considering how wasteful we've been. Now we're down the other end here with a corner. Can't quite find someone off the initial ball. But now Turner at the far post and that is a really good save from the goalkeeper. So we're definitely getting chances here to put this game to bed. Just can't take them. Hopefully won't prove too costly as Christchurch do make a sub. We go far post. And Tio Demiro, that one goes straight into the arms of the Christchurch United goalkeeper. And now the highlights are really flowing. Hit another one here as we make our way into the last 15 minutes. Sutton on the ball for to Clark. Now Mina down that left-hand side. Somehow gets some through the defender's legs. And Jamie Young will switch this one out to the right-hand side. Turner to Reek now just waiting here for a run. From our right back, doesn't really eventuate. So we go back there to our defenders, but Castro, he will get in behind, takes on the shot, but again, good save there from the Crush United goalkeeper. He's starting to come up with some big ones to keep them in this game. About to make our way into the last 10 minutes. Let's see if we can strike from a corner this time. Isaac Hughes, but unfortunately, yet again, straight into the path of their goalkeeper. Still 2 0 with 10 minutes left. And not so fast, because we're off the back of those previous highlights. It's another free kick here in our favour. Tristan Turner, good chance there, far post. But again, we can't quite hit the target. Do beat the goalkeeper, but still only 2-0 in front. Off the back of that, might go attacking just to try and absolutely put this game to bed. Let's see if it does something late to be fair. Might not be the best idea. If Christchurch United do go down the other end and score a late highlight here, they clear that one off the line through Orton. And then a shot, which comes off Castro. And it goes out for a goal kick. So a late chance there with a long-range rocket. But unfortunately, we're hindering ourselves. Thankfully, we pick up a win. But it wasn't very convincing. Just 2-0 there over Christchurch United. Thanks to a first-half goal from Castro and Torek Nair in the second half. And both goals as well had a bit of fortune. A free kick, which fell quite kindly. And a shot, which took a decent deflection. But we'll take that 2-0 win over Christchurch United. That'll put us top of the league nice and early in the Southern League season alongside Nelson Suburbs, who of course were also in the National League Championship last season. We'll go forward and recap the second leg against Barkers. Really, should be safe there with a 4-0 lead before seeing who we're going to be taking on in the Champions League final. And here are the highlights from the home league against Bar with that 4-0 lead from the first one. Gave anyone with a yellow card issue a rest in this game and did get off to a decent start there. Diabate scoring the opening goal around 25 minutes and in a few minutes off the back of that, we made it 2-0. Tariq now there, squares it back for Lorenzo Janssen, gets that one past Rocco Cake to make it 2-0. And 6-0 on aggregate to be fair off the back of that, foot would kick away a bit more. That didn't happen in fact, Bar they got the last goal in this game. Gunda puts that one away just inside of the far post, they make it 6-1 on aggregate, so that second leg wasn't too great, but thankfully the first leg away from home was just good enough to make sure we go through with a 6-1 aggregate win, so we got through nice and safely, and also everyone's going to be available for that Champions League final, albeit lots of players are going to be sitting on yellow cards, which might impact the group stages of that competition in 2034, and we'll come back tomorrow and play the final, and as you'd expect, that's against Tafia, albeit... They only just got past Kossa off back of a 2-1 win in the second leg, turning around a 2-1 result from the first leg, and they had to get it done on Pioni Satafia. We are taking on in the Champions League final. Of course, they were the team that did beat Auckland City in the group stage, so it does make sense. We're going to be taking them on in the final. 
but it will be at the GMP, hopefully going to be a bit better than we were in today's episode, but more clinical, and we can get past the team out of Vanuatu and lift the Champions League for, I believe, a fourth season in a row, but that will do it for today's episode. Got past Bar pretty comfortably. Also bet Christchurch United, albeit not the best performances in those games. If you enjoyed them, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well tomorrow, as I said, we'll come back for the Champions League final. In and around that, I imagine we should beat them inside 90 minutes. The games are a bit more average, but I think around the 18th, where we do take on Nelson Suburbs away, which could be interesting, but we might just come back instead and reveal the draw for the FIFA Club World Cup, because we definitely should be at that. That gets scheduled on the 18th of May. So we might do the Champions League final and then look forward to the FIFA Club World Cup, because no doubt that will be very interesting to see how we get on there against some big giant clubs from around the world in early June. So we should get stuck into that in only a couple of episodes time, but until tomorrow for the Champions League final, and hopefully we'll find out who we're going to be taking on at that Club World Cup. Thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.